Okay, uh, let's start the class. Um, we will finish this uh, second slide, the lecture two. Um, the, we will spend most of the time today talk about the gram stand. Okay, because this is important. I want you all to know here in the lecture section, say so in the lab, we could talk briefly and you can directly go to do the lab work. So first of all, let's finish, um, re relatively briefly finish some of the other microscope introduction. So the first one we, what we want to talk is a dark field microscope. So since it is called a dark field microscope, what this means, the background is dark and the specimen is showed up. Now the story is why they can do that. So here is the thing. I had a microscope. The objective lens is like this, okay? This is an objective lens. Okay, then I had a stage. Stage is right here. Okay, my light resource is right here. This is light resource. <coughs> and we also say this is a little bit of stuff right here. It's called a condenser. So what happened, if it's a traditional light field microscope, see the light just going through, okay, normal. What happened for the dark field microscope? There is a block, a solid block underneath the condenser. So there's a block. Once you have this block, then the light going through the objective lens will be perpendicular, 90 degree angle. That is the reason, because of this block, the light going through a condenser going to objective lens is perpendicular. That is why the background is dark and the specimen showed up, which is a color, which is a standard color, okay? Now, why this is a dark field microscope is important in the clinical area because they are using to identify a very special bacteria called a spiral sheet. Spiral sheets is a special bacteria, is like this. So we call it the asexual filaments. And it's very soft. It is difficult to do a traditional stain, like simple stain, the gram stain. So we need to use dark field microscope to do the observation. Now, why it is important? Because clinically, there is three important pathogens, which is a spiral sheets. Number one, treponemia palladium. This is the one will cause syphilis. It is the number one sexual transmitted disease in the world back a hundred years ago. Number two is Borrella burgdo ferro. Burgdo ferry. This is the one will cause Lyme disease. And you pretty much heard about that in the other classes or sometimes. What happened is, if you have an arm, okay, like this, this arm, you will see the rash, which is a target rash, like a bull eye, target rash. That is called by Borella burgdorferro. We will talk about that detail. Number three is leptospirin interrogans. Interrogan. This guy is very special like this. It's a hook shape. And this one will cause some liver disease, which is end up with a J U A N D John dance, which means a yellow eye. Okay, because of treponemia pridium, Borrelia burgdorferro, and uh, lepto-interrogans, uh, uh, lepto that's why. 
dark field microscope in the clinical area is important because that's used for identification spiral sheets. So that is dark field microscope. This is platinum, treponemia platinum, called syphilis, what it looks like. Asexual filaments, twisted, background is dark, and the sample is showed up, the specimen is showed up. Okay, phase contrast microscope. <coughs> Um, this guy, I want to talk a little bit briefly, because uh, the physics behind that is too complicated in some way. Phase contrast microscope. So what this means, you need to know a little bit of physics behind it. <clears throat> okay, there is a wavelength. Light going through a specimen, there is a wavelength. Okay, like this. Okay, then you have another wavelength. Maybe like that. And every time when you see a peak here, and there is a peak here, or we say a bottom, the light will be con contracted with each other. So it will be black, actually. And when you see something like that, and I didn't draw very well, this should be, this should be, one is light, one is the bottom, and the one, another one is top, something like this. Then it will be showed you the color. So when you see the peak and the peaks, they're contracted with, e with, e with each other, it will be black. If you see the curve, or some curve like this, it will be showing you color, okay? It's going to be showing you color. So this is natural, what happened. Now, what is the phase contrast microscope? Which means in here, I'm going to add a ring. This is a phase ring. The phase ring will change the wavelength speed. It's usually one quarter wavelength ahead of time or backwards. Either way. Most of the time is one quarter wavelength ahead. Once it is becomes that, then it's gonna be changed. So let's say you have a peak and a bottom or contracted with each other. I'm gonna shift a little bit. Is that right? I'm gonna shift it like this. Okay, then here I'm gonna be shifted on the top. Here you have two peak, maybe this becomes the bottom. Okay. So the wavelength will be shift, will be shift. Then so you shift to the wavelength. And at the end of the day, which is this is the board, and on this board, it's gonna show up the, the color. <coughs> so that's what they, what they do. So the principle behind that is very simple. The wavelength originally is set up. If we don't have a wave, the phase ring, you're not going to see it. Then we put the phase rings in because it changes the speed of the wavelengths. Most of the time is one quarter wavelength ahead or backwards. So then the peak, phase peak is changed. The peak is no longer phase the peak. The peak may, may be phase the bottom. Then they're not going to contract with each other. Or the levels they contract with each other is not that strong. Therefore, it somehow showed up some color. Now, why it is important? Because some of the bacteria, some of the microorganisms, especially the UK youths, for example, Saccharomyces visa, we want to see the in internal structure. And they are very soft and very difficult to do the stain. That's why we have to use phase contrast microscope. And this is the one you can see. When you use phase contrast microscope right in the middle, can you see it's more clear? You can see the internal structure. And very quick and very simple. This is a traditional one. And this is dark field, pretty much very dark. You see only those black ones, but when here, you will see the internal structure more obviously. And lots of the time, we could isolate those internal structures and do more work. That's why we need to know the location and the phase contrast because of the phase ring makes the images more clear compared to the traditional bright field and the dark field microscope. Okay, so just give you an example. This is used for testing UKIUTS most of the time. 
Okay, fluorescence microscope. Fluorescence microscope and the laser confocal microscope, we can put them together to talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk about this really briefly. Fluorescence microscope, the energy resource is different. It is still a light, but it's ultraviolet or UV light, so blue light. They are very short wavelengths. So what's the difference between that? If we draw here, the fluorescence microscope, uh, or EN, fluorescence microscope. Uh, if you, if, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, first of all, is uh, energy resource light? This is light energy resource. This is usually blue light, UV light. This is short wavelengths. So remember, when we talk about this guy, is it right? <coughs> Resolution power is lambda divided by 2 Na. This is smaller. When this becomes smaller, which means the resolution power is, the value is lower, but the capability is very strong, is strong. This is the first thing. Second, fluorescence microscope, we need to use a very special dye called fluorochrome. What are those? Right here, listed on the table 2.3. We have two commercial ones, which is Debbie Stan. And another one is Cyto9 Stan. This is a commercial name. What is the good advantage of these stains? These stains, they are not staining the whole bacteria. They are staining bacteria DNA. And they, why they can stain bacteria DNA? Because it's very good for penetration. Once they stain the bacteria DNA, they could separate a live cell and a dead cell. Usually, a green color is a live cell, and a red color is a dead cell. Dead cell is green is, is red color. Then you have to set up the wavelengths. Number three is the wavelengths. The wavelengths is different. So usually, the green wavelengths. We usually set up maybe 550 nanometer around, and the red one, usually it is about 625 nanometer or above. So you have the wavelength set up, and the bacteria, you stain the DNA, then you can differentiate live and dead cells. That is important. It's a good advantage compared to the traditional gram stain or simple stain, because we cannot differentiate the live and dead cell. That's why it is important. Now, why we say it's a fluorescence? Because the color somehow looks like yellow, shiny-ish, and a little bit of green. It's like a fluorescence. Okay, that's, that's why we call it a fluorescence microscope. Not really that <coughs> like a fluorescence, but uh, you could de differentiate somehow looks like fluorescence color. This is what it looks like. The red one is uh, a dead cell, the yellow one is a live cell. And you can see this is a streptococcus, which is a chain. And this is a vial, which is a, um, which is a environmental bacteria. Now, here we're going to move to the next one. Laser confocal microscope. Laser confocal microscope and the fluorescence microscope looks very similar, lots of the time. There is only one difference. What is the difference? 
Instead of you using lighter energy resource like blue light, UV light, the short wavelengths, we will use it as a laser. This laser usually we call it argon laser. And it's coming from a company called ZES, Z-E-I-S-S. -S. It's a ZES company. The company which produce those type of confocal microscope. It is the same thing. You still have to stain the bacteria, stain the DNA. The dye will be differentiated live and dead cell. The wavelengths have to set up. But what's the major difference? Confocal microscope, laser confocal microscope, because there's a laser, so they can be connected to the computer and generate a 3D images. And the 3D images is very important to detect a certain bacteria, which is called a bacteria biofilm. Bacteria biofilm is usually means a bacteria growing on the surface. And they are in a poor nutrition condition, they stack together, become a matrix. Now why this type of a biofilm is important? Because they are highly resistant to the sanitizer. Let's say traditionally the cell, we grow in a broth, we call it a vegetative cell. We're using 50 parts per million, 15 ppm chlorine, we can kill them. For the biofilm, even if we use 200 ppm chlorine, we may not kill them because they are highly resistant to the sanitizers. And those are the things we need to do more research about that. Then the tool is confocal microscope because we can see the 3D images and we can see a different layer there. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you one of the study what I did when I was a student um, in. Uh, sorry, I, when, when I was a, a research microbiologist in USDA AIS, Agricultural Research Service in Beltsville, Maryland, not far away from here, about three hours drive. Um, we using laser confocal microscope in the stainless steel coupon to see the bacteria reacted to that. So we mixed the bacteria, which is the first picture, which is Salmonella and Pseudomonas fluorescence. The bacteria has a relatively light fluorescence. So you see, if I use a Cyto9 kit, you see it's all green color, if it's a control. And you can see the color spectrometer is all go to the right side because it's a green color. The second one is that I'm trying to use just the water to wash the coupon. What do you will see? There are some of the dead cells, is that right? It's red. And the color spectrometer become too flat and perpendicular. So which means the color is kind of more diversity compared to all the green color. This is the one which is I use chlorine. I use 100 ppm chlorine. You will see most of them are green color. So a red color, so what happened? The wavelength shifted and it's all go to the top. So it's a red color. The last one is that I'm, I think the chlorine concentration <coughs> is not that good, but we cannot increase it because there's a limitation set up, up by the FDA, by the regulation. So I try to use in surfactants which is letter chlorine is more effective than what, what we see. Only two survived the cell. Most of their cell brownish color, which means they are injured. And you see the color spectrometer is right in the middle. And I didn't do the 3D images. This is just tells you the laser confocal microscope because of this laser and the color spectrometer. You could see the different situation, especially the difference in the live and dead cell. And this is typical biofilm study. Okay, so that's just give you some of some of the example. Okay, next we want to talk about the smear preparation. These slides I'm going to talk a little bit simple because in the lab we're going to practice simple stain. And uh, real quick today, some of the lab one well, we already did, so we want to talk really <coughs> briefly. First of all, the smear preparation. You have a glass slides. You put a drop of water. You add a bacteria. And make sure this specimen is thin, not sick, because we want to see the morphology of the bacteria. So we're going to put onto the, uh, in the room temperature, just put, lay out on your bench, let it be completely air dry. Because if you don't do air dry, finally, 
Under this microscope, these will be lots of legs there. The picture is not good. Following by air dry, we do the heat fixing, which means the glass lines on the top of the Bunsen burner, we back and forth a couple of times, and we want to deactivate the enzyme, let the bacteria stick onto the surface. And then we're going to add the dye there. After the dye, about one minute, the staining about one minute, we're going to dry, and then rinse, and then we do the observation underneath the microscope. We want to see the morphology and the shape of the bacteria. This whole procedure is coming from a company called the ZEISS. Can you see the ZES microimaging? That's a company first created fluorescence at the phase contrast microscope. Okay. Okay, now what are the dye we're gonna use? It? We already mentioned the basic dye is crystal violet, saffronine, methylene blue, carbon fusion. And they are staining the bacteria because the bacteria overnight grow at 35 degrees Celsius is negatively charged. Those dye are positively charged. And sometimes we can also do a negative stain, which means we are instead of staining the bacteria, we're going to stain in the background. Then we need some of the special dyes that is called acidic dye. The example is Nigro thing, Indian ink, eel thing, rose bango, acid fusion, all those things. Native stain is actually very important, and you could see sometimes a certain structure of the bacteria, especially like a capsule. For Streptococcus ammonia, it will be showing up because a capsule is a very important structure for Streptococcus ammonia to resist the host cell and they can survive and cause all kinds of problems. That's why we have to do a, a, a negative stain, because we simply to stain the bacteria is difficult sometimes. This is something you see that, it's just a crystal violet stain of E. coli. Methylene blue stain of the corner bacteria, and I usually talk about this all the time, the methylene blue, the stain is not very strong because their positive charge is not very strong. So at the beginning, I don't recommend you to use a methylene blue. And when you have experiences, you can use a methylene blue. And this is some of the conclusion here. You can see basic dye is positively charged, and the acidic dye is negatively charged. And a simple stain, we will know the shape, size, and the arrangement of the bacteria. So this slide is like a conclusion. And this is negative stain. You can see you stain the capsule. This is a very important bacteria we will mention again is Streptococcus ammonia, cause community acquired ammonia in the United States. This is diprococcal, packaged by a very heavy capsule which is composed by polysaccharides. You see the background is completely dark. Okay, that's called a negative stain. Okay, differentiate stain, gram stain. Uh, the slides or text box said acid fast stain, endospore stain, phylogenous stain, capsule stain. I would not say those are differentiated stain. I would say just simply say those are special stain. But the gram stain is a differentiated stain. That what we're going to talk in more detail right now to talk about the brand. And I said, same as microscope use, the gram stain is a basic, very important technology you need to learn in the lab. So let's talk about that. The gram stain. First of all, gram stain created by Hesse Crystal Graham. He's a Danish scientist, microbiologist. It is a very magic technique. Based on the Graham <coughs> stand, we could differentiate bacteria into two different categories. What about the two different categories? Which is gram positive and the gram negative. And the gram positive 
stains purple color. Or some of the textbook said it stains blue. But I usually say it stains purple. And the grand native bacteria stains red. Some of the textbooks say it's pink. So pink to red. OK, how about fungi? If it's fungi, we usually say, simply say, gram stain blue. OK, just very simple. Now the third question. What is the major steps of gram stain? Now, of course, you have to do like air dry, heat fixing, um, all those things. But after that, you're going to move to a major grime stain procedure. What are they? There are four major steps. Number one is crystal violet. Stain 60 seconds. Number two is gram iodine. Crystal violet, we just put a basic dye, which is a purple color for the bacteria. The gram iodine, we call it a mordant. We want to make sure the crystal violet stay strong. Okay, after the gram iodine, what are we going to do? It's a very special step. We're going to use 95% alcohol to do the decoloration. And this will be only 10 seconds decoloration. Okay, after decoloration, it depends. We don't know. Maybe we don't have any color there. So we have to put some color back. Therefore, the last step, we need to add saffronine. This is called counter stain. And the counter stain, also 60 seconds. This is crystal iodine, is also 60 seconds, every step. Especially this 95% alcohol is 10 seconds. OK. OK, now the second, now the big question. The principle behind that. Why gram positive bacteria is purple color? And why gram negative bacteria is pink color? This will be a big question. Why? Some of you know about that, learned in your other classes, so we have to emphasize and review it here. Or somebody never know about it. This is a big story behind that. Okay. Basically, there is a two theory behind it. Number one, we call it cell wall theory. Number two, I wrote here, it is called a lipid theory. Most of the textbook talk about is cell wall theory. This is you know. Okay, then we need to know the basic structure of a bacterial cell. What it looks like. What it looks like. Okay, let's draw it. You usually have this guy right here. Okay, what is this? Double layer. Cell membrane system. We give them a name called fluid mosaic model. The lipid, lipids and the protein, phospholipids and the protein, they are interacted with each other. So this is the protein. And this is the lipids. Is that right? And we call it the phospholipids. Okay. 
Now we draw it again here. So you can draw on your notebook and get to know the structure of what it looks like. And uh, by the way, if you know your biology, these lipids have two hands, two ends. This guy on the top is relatively like water, is that right? <coughs> so what we call hydrophilic. That means it is water-like. Okay, the bottom one is doesn't like water, so we say it's a hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, we also call it a lipopolic because it like lipids. So this like water. These are the basic things you need to know. I will get to this detail in next week. Okay, this is cell memory system, cell memory. For the molecular model, you know this. Okay, what's going to be the top? There's a major difference. If it is a gram-positive bacteria, there is a very heavy structure on the top. Pep, hydro, glycan. Very heavy right here. They on the top. This is maybe tachoic acid. Maybe something like say for the pouring or the structure on the top. Now this is the big guy right here. That's gram positive bacteria. Okay, what is gram negative bacteria looks like? Gram negative bacteria, this peptide glycan is very thin. Okay, it is very thin. This is a thin pep hydro glycan. Now, on the top of what they have, we just talk briefly. Here is LPS. What is that? Lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharides have a head which is called the lipids A. Lipopolysaccharides will generate a special toxin called endotoxin. This is the reason why E. coli, salmonella, or most of those gram-negative bacteria is a big trouble for the medical area and the food industry because of the LPS lipopolysaccharides. So, what are the major differences? Number one, peptidokinase. We comes out with cell wall theory. What is that? We had a crystal violin there. This is a basic dye. We had it. We had a gram dye. We let it stay strong. Okay, it's followed by the 95% alcohol to do the decoloration. Because gram positive bacteria have a very heavy peptide glycan, so the crystal violet is a hold on them. And the decoloration did not wash them off. So it stays there. And then you do the counter stain. Doesn't really work because the color is already there. That's why it is purple color. <coughs> However, for gram negative bacteria, because the peptide glycan is very thin, they cannot hold on the crystal violet very strong. So when you do the decoloration, at 95% of alcohol, what happened? It will be contracted. Then it's all washed off. So washed off. There is no color there, is that right? I'm going to add something. Theoretically, no color there. So I do a counter stain. The counter stain, I add a saffroning. Saffroning is pink color. That's why it is pink. This is the first theory. It's called the cell wall theory. So see the very simple. is a heavy peptidal glycan in gram positive bacteria hold on crystal violet during alcohol decoloration process. 
The gram-negative bacteria didn't do it because it's a thin peptidine glycan. Okay, what is lipid theory? Because gram-negative bacteria have a lipopolysaccharides, the head of lipopolysaccharides is lipids A. So the overall lipids component in gram-negative bacteria is about 10 to 15% lipids. And for gram-positive bacteria, is around less than 5% lipids. And you know that lipids is dissolved in the alcohol. When you prepare a ground beef in your home, you, your hands are so sticky, is that right? Of course you use a soap. What else do you do if you don't have soap? If you have a red wine, add a little bit of red wine, mix with water, you wash it, you can wash it off. Because lipids dissolve in the acid, in the dissolve in the alcohol. So what happened? Okay, crystal violet is there, gramina is there, this dye is there. I'm at 95% of alcohol. Because this guy, the gram negative bacteria, have 10% lipids. So it together with the dye, it's all washed off. Which means they help the decoloration process. And then it's all colorless. So then you add. Cut a stain with saffroning. Saffroning showed up, become a red color. And the gram positive bacteria, it is only 5% lipids. It doesn't really work too much. Okay, so said so very simple the lipid theory is a high percentage of lipids assist, assistant decoloration process. Because lipids help crystal violet <coughs> dissolve in alcohol. That's a theory. So, at the end, if you really understand the principle, Gram-positive bacteria, it stains purple. This is actually crystal violet color. And the gram-negative bacteria stays red and the pink. It is saffron in color. Okay, that's, a, that's the first thing. Second thing. We also want to mention, because gram stain is based on the cell wall theory for the peptidine glycan, therefore gram stain, we have to use a very young and fresh culture. So this needs to be a young, fresh bacteria. How young it is? Less than 24 hours after incubation. Because if it's an older one, what's going to happen? If the bacteria more than 72 hours, they'll start to die. The peptidine glycan will be cracking. Once they're cracking, they cannot hold on the bacteria, <coughs> dies. It cannot hold on those crystal viruses that die. What's going to happen? They all will stain gram negative. So we say gram variable stain. So very simple example, Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive bacteria. If it's 24-hour culture, it's a really nice, beautiful purple color. If the culture has stayed on the bench for like 72 hours, then you stand, it's pink. It's like an E. coli. The reason is the peptidine glycan is already cracking down. So you have to use a young culture. Okay, that's really, really important. The last thing I want to mention for gram stain, we always know gram positive and gram negative. But there are three items are really important. We should always remember to recording a gram stain results, which is gram reaction. Number one. Number two is morphology of the bacteria. What are the shape of the bacteria? Is it a cocktail? Is it a lots? Or is it a vibro? The last one is the cell arrangement. 
So what kind of arrangement? Is it a single cell? Is it a diprococ cell, which means two cock cells stacked together? Is it the chain, like streptococcus? Is it a grape shape, like you observe in the lab, the staphylococcus? Or it may be no shape. Or maybe four of them stacked together, we call it a tetrins. That's called arrangement. So gram state reactions. Gram reaction, morphology, and ar arrangement, those are the three things you have to record it. Okay, so this is a gram stain. We're spending a lot of time to talk. Finally, I also want to mention, this 95% alcohol decoration is very tricky. That have to be 10 seconds. You can't do more than that. So there is a tricky question I always ask you. If some students made a mistake in the lab and decoration about one minute, what will happen? It will all become gram negative. The same thing because it's all washed off. And I tell you students, if you don't know this question, think about you do the decoration, somebody called you to go home. So you come back to the lab for two hours, everything is washed off. Okay, so that's another possibility is gram-positive bacteria stains gram-negative. Number one is it is older culture. Number two is decoration is too long. And the last thing I also want to say, the procedure of the gram stain is very important. You have to follow the procedure. But the stain in time is not important. We stay 60 seconds, you can do 30 seconds, it's still the same. But the procedure, if you messed it up, it will not get the same and ideal results. Okay, so that's all something important. Okay, that's a gram stain we finished talking about. Next, we move on to several um, very special stain. We want to talk about that. Um, these are interesting. Some of them we practice in the lab. We used to have the strings. Uh, some of them we don't have, so we can't do it anymore. OK, acid fast stain. Acid fast stain. <laughs> is used to test a very special bacteria we talk about already, mycobacteria. And the mycobacteria has two different species. Mycobacteria tuberculosis, tuberculosis, this is acronym TB, everybody knows. Bob Cook is the first person based on the tuberculosis. Set up the post, the Coke postulate will define the relationship be between microorganism disease and the bacteria. The second one is a minor symptoms, usually we call microbacterial leporeal. If it's a leporeal, it is usually a mild symptom. Uh, not really mild compared to TB, it is mild symptom. This guy is a bacteria usually coming from raw milk, coming from corn. Therefore, in West Virginia, there is a big debate. Are you should sell in raw milk to the customer in the localized area, in the farmer's market? Do we should do a pasteurization? It's a big debate. Okay. And what's going to be the happen for the microbacterial leporeal? It's a hunchback. Because the debone, we call the debone, so the back is, back is, is like, like that, the hunchback. You have a cartoon movie, it's called a hunchback, what? I forgot about Is that a cartoon movie when you see when you were young? Yeah. That's a hunchback, because the debone, okay? So, now what is special for this bacteria? This bacteria in the cell wall have a very high amount of long chain Unsaturated fatty acids. Unsaturated fatty acids. And you know that C180 is what is this? Stereoic acids. What is this guy? These you see the two there, that means two double bonds, which is unsaturated fatty acids, is that right? Palmitic acids or those unsaturated fatty acids. And we need to eat some of the unsaturated fatty acids because it's, early, it's easy for digestion, will not cause uh, um, blood problems, all kinds of things. 
Okay, there's a lock chain unsaturated fatty acids. So what happened? The name is called mycotic acids. <clears throat> These mycotic acids will generate a very waxy cell wall. So the basic dye and the gram stain, those dye, crystal violet, saffronin, methylene blue, you cannot penetrate because of this waxy cell wall caused by mycotic acids. So what you have to do, you have to do is heat steaming. This is heat steaming, not heat fixing. And you need to add a very special dye called <coughs> carbon fusion. The so carbon fusion, which is a little bit uh, blue color to purple color. A little bit of purple, I would say. You have to flood in the glass lines. Okay, flooding. This is called flooding. We'll talk about in the lab, how to flood it. Then you have to do a heat steam. This heat steam, which means the heat has to be in the top. And the Bunsen burner has to be on the top, back and forth, like five minutes. So heat steam five minutes. Or what you can do is uh, the water is go down back here, it's on the bottom in a water bus. Let the steam come on the from the bottom, water bus like 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. Let the steam go on the back. This has to do five minutes. Let the carbon fusion penetrate into the very waxy cell. And once you stand about like a purplish color, we rinse. But we want to differentiate, is that microbacteria or it's just a bag of the trash? So we also got to do counter stain with methylene blue. So that's why when you see what it looks like, look at these. Carbon fusion, purple color, it is microbacteria, tuberculosis or lepreo, all this background, the methylene blue color is like a trash.